Hey everybody, thanks for checking out another one of these videos on integrating FileMaker and HTML5. And today I want to show you an example of using some HTML5 in JavaScript to allow us some drag and drop functionality inside one of our layouts. So first I want to show you sort of the before snapshot. This is actually a database that I use um, to manage the starting rosters on a football team. So here you can see it's just a very simple portal. What I have is the team here, and then I have all the different players on the team. Now what I have to do here is organize all the players into different positions. So we have quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends. But what I want to do is I want to rank them. I want to put a number next to their name. If they're the starting quarterback, I want to put number one, for example. And then I have this starting column. That's what the S means. And I'll put an X in there. And then I just go down in order of all the different players, and I'll say number one, number two, number three, and then whoever the starting ones are, and so on. So this isn't a bad process. I can do this manually. It works out okay, but what I wanted to do is, is be able to add some sort of drag and drop type functionality. So what I did, if I open out the layout a little bit, is I added some web viewers. And here, now what it does, is every time I load this layout, it's going to automatically load all the quarterbacks in this one, all the running backs in this one, and the wide receivers, and so on. But the cool part about this is, is now I can actually drag these things around. So I can say, let's say put this guy as the number two, and then what it's going to do is, first of all, recognize that the guy that's on the top is the starter and make him yellow. And, and also, it's going to go in and check the S for starting, and then it's going to rank everybody in the order that they should be. So here, um, you'll notice now that it readjusts. It puts the starter on top and so on. And I can do the same thing here. So I'm going to drag this guy over here and drag the second one as well. And eh, let's see. Let's move him out of the starting spot. And so as I go through each one of these, I'm running scripts in the background that's not only updating everything, but ranking everybody and setting the starters. So um, this ends up being a really good way for me to visualize how I can manage what, what are called depth charts. And the way I'm doing it is just by using web viewers and JavaScript. So let's take a look at uh, how I came about being able to do this. So first I had to find some JavaScript. And what I did there is... I went uh, to jQuery UI, and I happened to find some JavaScript here that's uh, called J Dragable. This is in the jQuery UI website. Uh, there's a bunch of different interactions that you can check out. Um, I was looking at Dragable, and really, it's probably the best way to approach this is I like to kind of troll around all these websites, and I'll find something like this, and I thought, oh, wow, I know how I can make a use of this. Um, you know, if you're just kind of experimenting with it. So here you'll notice that it's exactly what I've got, the ability to drag these things around, and I notice that it can identify at least one of the items as a highlight, so that's something that I could work with there. So what I needed was the code, and um, on all the jQuery UI pages, there's this view source. <coughs> and when you look at the view source, you can see all the different code, and this is pretty simple HTML. <clears throat> this is pretty excuse me. This is pretty simple HTML. All I really have to be able to do here is have my calculation engine or a calculation field that I'm going to create in FileMaker have it output this formatted HTML. And now the secret is this list of items is actually driven by this little array down here. So I'm going to need a calculation that can emulate this array, and then a calculation that's going to output all this HTML and reference this array. Pretty simple stuff, really. And, you know, don't know much about jQuery, as uh, I've been telling you in, in this whole video series. Um, but I do know that there are some jQuery references here. We've got a reference to jQuery UI as a CSS file. <coughs> jQuery 191.js, jQuery UI JS, and StyleSS. So all those files make up the suite of files that I'm going to need to uh, store inside of my database and then represent inside calculations. So here I've got all the different files that I need to reference. <clears throat> and 
And the one I want to concentrate on is draggable HTML. If I copy this, I'm going to eventually need to create a calculation field that spits this all out, right? So we've done that. I went into the database here. Let's take a look at how I did all this stuff here. So I went in. First of all, let me back up for a second. We Oh, we created a table called resources. Here's the table called resources. And I went and I defined a field for every one of those JavaScript or CSS files. And then what I do, it's not necessary, but I create a uh, field to, to store the original HTML as well. In case I ever mess up, I can go back and uh, check out what the original is supposed to look like. And here's what it looks like. So it's just simply a, a field, and I use global fields because um, if I ever have to do anything that's session specific, I can update these values on the fly and then it's just specific to that one user in their session. So there's the JavaScript, CSS, another JavaScript, another CSS, and the original HTML. So now what I need to do is create a calculation field that's going to output this formatted HTML. So let me show you what I've got here. And you're going to notice this is really in the spirit of all the different videos that you've seen. So down on the bottom, ignore all these other fields, but um, here I've got one that's called sortable QB HTML calc. So this is for the quarterback position. And if you really look next to these, you see that everything here is all formatted and escaped out properly. But if the key here, again, just to reiterate, is instead of referencing an externally hosted JavaScript resource file or CSS file, what I've done is, uh, now you'll notice up real close here, is that um, instead of instead of actually uh, referencing the file, I don't want to have to rely on having uh, access to the web, nor do I want to have to access, you know, making those calls all the time. So what I do is I, of course, built these fields, copied and pasted the all the code inside the field, but then I run a script on startup that moves the entire jQuery file or CSS file into my global session. As a matter of fact, you'll notice right now if I go into my data viewer and current, you'll notice that right now in my application memory, so local to my machine, I've got the CSS. I've got a huge one here, um, and actually, it you know it takes so long to to load, which is exactly why I want to move it into uh, application memory because this could be, I mean, these some of these jQuery files they're like thousands of lines long. Um, so you want to not have to actually go back to the file each, or go back to the field within the database file each time to find that. So even just hovering over those things to show you uh, would take a lot of processing power. So imagine how long it would take within the context of your calculation. Not as long as you're seeing on screen here. The data viewer just has a really hard time with these things. But now I've got it in application memory, which will work either on the desktop or on FileMaker Go, of course. And I've got my calculation field. So let's go back to the calculation field down here. <clears throat> so everything's the same as you see over here. There's a function that's created down here as part of this with the sortable hash. You see all that stuff in there. I've formatted a little bit differently just so I can keep track of things. And then we close out the script, and we close out the head, and then we open up the body, right? So in the body, this is where I need to have this array. But instead of hard coding something into my HTML, what I decided to do is create another field called sortable QB starting calc, and that is just a list function that points to the child table. So remember, I'm on a team record, and I'm looking at different player fields. So down on the in the context of the player table, which is actually called skill players in this case, I've got a field called sortable player calc, and here's kind of where the secret comes from. Notice that I need to have a, uh, a line, class equals, and then the UI state defaults, C -span, all that kind of stuff in here. And so I put all this information in here, and this arrow thick is a, is a key to what it looks like on screen. But what I've done is I've pulled the full name of the player and the position that they play, 
and I have that show up in the line. So basically I'm dynamically, through my calculation, dynamically creating each line. And then when I go back to the context of the team, which is where the web viewers are, I am just using a list function so it creates the array for me. I use list functions a lot. I'm a big fan of the list function uh, for creating these types of dynamic arrays. And then of course this uh, calculation is not stored. So that means that every time I add a new player or change a position or whatever it is, my lists are going to automatically update. So now I've got the HTML and it's referencing my uh, starting quarterbacks. And down here is where the magic happens. <coughs> Excuse me. So you're going to notice that uh, this is where we actually, this gets a little bit more complicated. We've actually created my own JavaScript here. So in between this script tag and this script tag, we've added this to the existing script. Because what I want to do there is run a script or run this URL. And here you see I've got a URL that dynamically finds the host of the database, dynamically finds the name <coughs> of the file, and then runs a script that's called write array, passes it a parameter called QB. That way I can run the same script um, from whatever context. In this case, I'm running it from quarterback, and I'm setting the quarterback array field. So long story short, with, and this is an area where you do need to know some JavaScript. It's not a ton of heavy lifting here, but to kind of put this into FileMaker terms, I'm creating a function. Like, it's like a custom function. And all this stuff is going to happen when some action occurs. And so what I'm doing, this window location, you've probably seen this in a couple of the different videos. What this is actually doing is I'm going to run this function, the callFM function, and I'm going to, the window location is really like open URL. And so what's the string that we want to run in, in OpenURL, which is the FileMaker version of this, and that's this FMP string. And then I've stopped the string at the, the uh, variable here, dollar sign QB array equals, and so I need to pass the FileMaker script something, and that's where I come up with roster array. Okay? So in English, what's basically happening here is when the user is done moving the block, this URL is sent back to this hosted file. And since I'm in the same session, you'll notice that even though, and what you, did, what you didn't see is I had to log into this file. This file is password protected. But notice I don't have to pass the account in here, and that's because I'm in the same session. So my user's already authenticated against the database. I don't need this URL to authenticate because the only way this can run is if a user that's already authenticated to my database is running it. So that's a, a, a great uh, a feature of being able to do this inside a web viewer. So take a look at this code, pause the video if you want to learn a little bit more, but basically what I'm doing there is I'm just saying when I'm done dragging the box, go ahead and uh, run this script. And so the script that runs is this one here. If we look under uh, the script that I've got, it's a pretty simple script. I'm just doing you know a script version of a case statement where I'm checking to see what the parameter was and if they ran, if it was run from within the QB, then I just simply do this set field where I've got an array and I have it set the array that it pulled from the JavaScript into a field in FileMaker, and then I run a parsing script on it. And the key here is that I really don't have to do all the heavy lifting in JavaScript. Here I'm doing a bunch of FileMaker scripting, and then really the heavy, heavy lifting, not in the web application part, not in the JavaScript, is this uh, parsing script that I'm doing. So I'm just going to related records, finding the QB array, doing a little... Uh, loop inside application memory and then I'm finding the top two ones in the list and marking them as, as uh, starting. And the reason I wanted to show you that is because you know don't be afraid of, of integrating this JavaScript in. If you do it or even if you have someone else do it, keep in mind you can still use um, all of your FileMaker scripting and calculation know-how to manage what's happening on screen. So I could use calculations to change what's actually showing up here. I could use what I know in calculations to manage um, you know, what happens when I'm running this, or, and I could just manage, like, for instance, here, in this case, I wanted the top two guys to show up as the starting ones, whereas in quarterbacks, I just wanted the top one guy to show up. So what I uh, did is I just changed the script and changed some of the calculations. So again, the idea here is that um, you can 
uh, integrates uh, some of these web viewers into your FileMaker layouts right alongside other FileMaker layout objects and add some real subtle, interesting drag and drop type functionality um, that I think can be really compelling. <clears throat> and in this case, what I'm doing is I'm emulating uh, what uh, you know people use in coaching rooms. They actually have little uh, white magnetic whiteboards with the name of the player on top, and they just kind of move them down when injuries happen or when people surpass others on the depth chart. So what I'm really doing is I'm mimicking the way that people interact with this data in real life, but I'm doing it inside my FileMaker layout. So appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. Please, of course, go check out FileMakerHTML5.com uh, for new blog entries and uh, new videos and screen caps. Um, appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot, guys.